All right, welcome everybody. What's up, Facebook? How you guys doing? Uh, excited. Today is, so far, an awesome day. It's Friday, so it's generally awesome by default, but today has been an awesome day so far. A lot happening, a lot of things going on, a lot I want to share with you guys. But uh, again, if you are uh, watching this on replay, thank you for being on. If you're watching it live, even better, you can go ahead at any point in time and you can right below here tap the like button, love button, any of those, and you can tap them as many times as you want. A lot of folks don't realize that you can just continue to hit it, uh, and it'll actually show your picture and kind of float across the screen a little bit. So definitely be doing that. If you, are, uh, if you haven't already, in the top right-hand corner, go ahead and click the live notifications button. That'll let you know every time I go live so that you can hop on and see what's going on and what I'm talking about when I'm uh, putting on there. Hey, ZD, and hey, is it ZD? Am I saying that right? ZID? I'm sorry if I'm killing your name. I'm terrible at names. Uh, and I'm going to assume that's Billy. I'm going to hope that's you. I got your text, by the way, Billy. I am going to send you those details as soon as I'm done with this live cast. Um, so uh, what I want to talk about today is one of the concepts from my book. So this is my book, Get Out of Your Own Way. If you haven't gotten your copy yet, head on to Amazon, find it. My name is Bob McIntosh. You can find it on there. Just Google it. Um, it's $15. Um, and when you buy this, it's going to have a lot of great information in it. It's a compilation of not just things that I've thought and uh, seen and put out there and recognized in the last few years. It's also a combination of things. I've interviewed a lot of very large business owners, five, six, seven, eight, even nine figure business owners to get their idea about how they got out of their own way to build their business. But in this book, uh, one of the chapters I have here. I actually forget the exact chapter name uh, number, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, but the, the, the chapter is titled Excellence Over Perfection. And it's something that I want to share with you guys because I think it's really important. And I think it's something that's overlooked well too often. Uh, and that's why the title of this is Perfection is Bullshit. Because it is. It just straight up, there is no way around the other way to say it, but it is. What I want to share with you guys now is a handful of things from my book uh, that I wrote in there. If you haven't read my book already, you're going to find uh, these things in there. If you have, it'll be, a great, um, it'll be a great way to refresh your memory on what we're talking about here. But perfection is bullshit, and I don't want you guys to chase it. For those of you who are new business owners or existing business owners, going after perfection continuously is always going to lead to negative results. And by the way, guys, if you have questions or anything like that, you can leave comments right below. Don't be afraid to hit the like button. Uh, again, it just kind of helps boost me up out there, lets more people see what's going on. And uh, if you could as well, actually, you should be able to share this broadcast or add people in. Uh, there should be a button right below that says share, I believe, although I don't see the same thing you guys see, so I'm not exactly sure what it looks like on your phone, But because uh, it kind of depends too. But anyways, beside the point, Let's talk about why perfection's bullshit. Um, and first things first, I want to start with a simple story. So think about the iPhone, for example. I use this story all the time because I think it's one of the most relevant stories. I also think it's one that illustrates the point of excellence over perfection the best. When you look at Samsung versus iPhone, a lot of times the ideas between those two phones are a little bit different. So iPhone says, listen, we don't want to have the latest, greatest, biggest, most, you name it, technology out there in our phone. We want to have maybe a fraction of what is available, but when it's in there, it's going to work flawlessly. It's going to be 100% excellent. And that's what they put out there. Samsung, on the other hand, will say, no, we want the latest, the greatest, all the new gadgets. If, you, if it's something that a phone can do, it should do it. And it may not work exactly perfect, but it's something that no one else has on their phone. And so that's kind of the difference, right? Now, either way you look at it, you have to admit that when Samsung or Apple puts out a new phone, either product is generally going to be excellent. They're not going to be perfect. In Apple's case, it's not perfect because it's missing a lot of cool technology that Samsung has. In Samsung's case, they have all that cool technology, but it may not work flawlessly. So it's definitely not perfect. But they're both, either way you look at it, excellent products. And I think the sales speak for themselves. I mean, if you look at those two companies, they are the number one uh, in both Android and then obviously Apple selling Apple phones. They are the largest uh, between those two companies, they own, it's something like 65 or 70% of the smartphone market share. It's like insane. That means by default, it has to be an excellent product because if it was crap, nobody would buy it. 
So when I say perfection is bullshit, what I really mean is not that you shouldn't strive or work towards it or try to make your thing as good as possible. It's to make it as excellent as possible. We can't ever achieve perfection. One of the biggest misconceptions out there is that perfection is something that can be achieved. And the, the difference here is that perfection can only de be defined by us as human beings and what we think is perfect, someone else might not think is perfect. They might not feel the same way about that. And so when we put something out that we think is perfect, we're not defining perfection in our product. Our customers are, um, our, our users, the people that are logging in, buying things from us, selling things to us, uh, following us on social media, engaging with us, our friends, our family. Those are the people that are defining perfection for us. And since they're defining it, there's no way we can ever meet their expectations. Or if we meet one, we might not meet everyone's expectations. In fact, it's be almost impossible to meet every single person's expectations. But what you can do is make something that's excellent. Excellence is not defined as much by everybody else. It's more defined by you. Okay? Um, and what I mean by that is you can put out something that's excellent. You know if something's excellent or it's not. And generally speaking, excellence is going to have a very um, much more even playground across everything than what's uh, than perfection is ever going to have. Right at the end of the day, if you think about it, something doesn't have to be perfect to be excellent. I'm going to say that again because I think that's important. Something doesn't have to be perfect to still be excellent. Think back to the iPhone, the Samsung. They're not perfect but they are excellent devices. And that's what we want to achieve. In your business, when you're building, whatever you're building, whether it's you're building your brand, whether it's building your customer base, whether it's building a physical product, whether it's building your audience, it doesn't matter what you're building. When you put things out there, they doesn't have to be perfect. But what it does have to be is excellent. Don't ever let yourself put out subpar uh, stuff just for the sake of putting it out. Now, this gets back to a phrase that uh, my good friend Ralph Plum uh, told me a long time ago, probably four or five years ago when I uh, first uh, started getting mentored by him and the Mind Protein team. And that is, done is better than perfect. And done is better than perfect is not an excuse for you guys to go out there and say to yourself, oh, all right, it's done, let's just put it out there, who cares what, if it works or doesn't work, whatever. It's not that kind of excuse. It's a way for you to say, hey, listen, we're 80% or more of the way to a perfect or what we're defining as perfect product, let's get it out there. Don't let it hold back. Don't let it push you back. Don't let it stop you from getting things done. And that's the biggest hiccup that I see so many entrepreneurs out there get stuck on is that they get in their own way. That's why I wrote the books. I tell you, they get out of your own way. They get stuck in their own way with this idea of perfection instead of trying, trying to strive for excellence because excellence is far, far more important than perfection ever will be. And so I want to push you guys to strive for excellence. Now, in my book, I have a bunch of different ways that you can um, strive for excellence, that you can go out there and really start getting, you know, diving into it and understanding and learning how there are, uh, how there's ways that you can, can do this. Now, in my book, there's 10 ways. I'm going to share just a couple here uh, because I think, uh, obviously, one, I want you to go read the book and I don't have time to go through all 10 of them, okay? But few things. Uh, one of the ones I think is probably one of the most powerful is to truly listen. Okay? Truly listen. So listen to your customers. Listen to your peers. Listen to uh, your competitors. Listen to your critics. Listen to people who praise you. Why are they praising you? What are they praising you for? Listen to your haters. Your haters are going to give you more, um, more fuel to move forward and make your stuff more excellent than anyone else out there. So I encourage you to listen to all of those people. Okay? When you dive in, when you're listening to them, hear them. Don't just be like, uh-huh, nod and smile. Like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, that's a great idea. I'm not going to do any of that. No, we don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to listen to them, take their feedback objectively. Don't take it personally. Take it objectively. And then make a decision and say, hey, is this feedback valuable? Can I use this to improve myself, my business, my product, my services, my customers, um, my employees, whatever else is out there, can you use it to improve those things? Because if you can, then it's valuable feedback no matter who it came from. If it's not valuable feedback, if it's like, hey, that's you know, a good idea but just not in our wheelhouse of what we need to be doing or focusing on, that's fine too. You thank them for the feedback and then you move forward. One of the most powerful things that I do on a regular basis with a group of folks that I speak with constantly is that I get feedback. 
I went to uh, an event in Detroit a few months ago, and one of the other speakers, uh, we call him a captain, he's kind of like uh, in charge of all the other speakers, he left me something like six pages of notes about my speaking. Now, I could have easily sat there and said, oh, I'm offended, what do you mean? Like, I did a great job, the, the, you know, everyone there liked me, I got good reviews, how could you leave me six pages of notes, I could get pissed about it. Or, what we always talk about doing in our group of speakers, and I full-heartedly believe this, is to say thank you. Thank you for that feedback. Yes, your criticism, everything that you just told me, it's a gift to make me better, to make my business better, to make everything I'm doing better. And so I say thank you for that gift. And I encourage you guys, all of you out there on Facebook right now, to say thank you to your haters, to your peers, to your lovers, to everyone else out there that, that gives you feedback. Because whether the feedback is valuable or not, then giving it is a gift to you and your business and you need to treat it as such. Because if you don't, then you're just wasting it. And a wasted gift is no good to anybody. So again, truly listen, get out there, make things happen, find out what they want, people want, what are they saying, and then use that feedback in your business to make yourself better. So it's a huge, huge thing. Again, just listening to people that are out there, what they're saying, how they're saying it, all of that stuff. Um, and, and don't just you know assume, well, just because this person is a hater, that their advice is completely irrelevant. Some of the best advice I've gotten is from, from people who have given me, um, who I would classify as my haters. Those of you who are my haters out there, I know who you are. Stop hating, but it's okay. I, I thank you for your gift of hate anyways, because it makes me stronger, it makes me better, and it makes me move forward nonetheless. All right, um, one more that I want to share, and then again, you can pick up the rest if you get my copy of my book. You can get all 10 of them. I go into detail with all of them. But the next one is to define your mission. All too often, people don't have clarity in their head of where they're heading. They're just like, oh, I'm chasing the money. I'm chasing the... They don't really understand why they're doing it. Um, and the biggest problem with chasing the money is that while the money is important, don't get me wrong, I would never sit here and say that, oh, money's not important. People who say that, bullshit to that too. Um, money is important. I don't care what anybody says. But money is important not because of what it is. It's important because of what it leads you to. And that's the difference that most people don't have. They chase the money. They don't have a clear mission of when they get the money, then what? Okay, then what? And I talk to people all the time who are massively successful, way more successful than I am, making a ton more money than I am, making a, a literally one metric ship ton more of money than I am. But guess what? They don't have their mission. They didn't understand why they were doing it. And so to them, they're kind of floundering. Even though they have a lot of money, they're rich, all right? Uh, they're rich in money. They're actually poor in a lot of other areas of their life. So I encourage you to define your mission. Understand what it is that you're doing all of this for. Why are you starting this? And it could be for your kids. It could be for your grandkids. It could be for uh, your spouse. It could be because you just like to travel the world and you want to get out and be able to have the freedom of time and money to do that. It could be uh, any number of things. Shoot, it could be because you want to move into a better house. That's fine. That's what the money is enabling you to do is to have a better place to live, to feel more comfortable about where you're at. That's fine. It could be because you want to drive fast cars because that feeling you get when driving a fast car is exhilarating as heck. I don't really care what the reason is. You have to figure your own reason out. I can't tell that to you. But when you figure it out, that's what's the most important thing. That's what I want you to, to look at. Why are you doing all of the things that you're doing? Why are you willing to sacrifice time? Why are you willing to give up your nine to five to work from five to nine? Okay, that's what I want you to think about. Define that mission, understand it. And even if you realize right now that you have no chance of getting that mission done, you have no chance of really getting there right this second, it's not about right this second, it's about long term. Okay, it's about long term. I didn't start out uh, you know, where I am today. I had to build it. I didn't write a number one bestseller because, oh, I decided last night that's what I'm going to do. No, it took time and effort and I had to build that over time. But guess what? That was the goal. I always kind of knew, hey, this is something I want to work towards. The money is going to allow me the, the time freedom to work on the book, to launch the book, to spend the money on the marketing, the transcription services and everything else that went into it. This is what it's all about. Um, and then I achieved that goal and now I'm on to the next goal. And so I encourage you to put that out there. In fact, what I want you to do, if you're watching this still live, there's a few of you still on, or if you're watching this on replay, what's your why? What's your mission? I want you to write it in the comments right below here. Tell me what your why is. I love to see what other people are doing out there, why they're doing out there, why they're doing the things they're doing. But more importantly to me is that perhaps I can help you with that. Who knows? 
All right, I have all kinds of context, or perhaps you're doing something that can help me, and we can work together. I can help you fulfill what you, you, your why, and you can help me at the same time. I don't know, but if you don't put it out there, there's no way for anyone to know. Um, so, again, that's it. Just wanted to keep this fairly brief today. Um, but thank you guys for being on. As always, I hope you guys got a lot of value out of this. If there's a topic you want me to talk more about, or if you've read my book and you have questions, or there's something in here that you're like, hey, you know, Bob, could you talk more about this topic? Leave me a message, leave a comment. I'm always open to doing these live casts about something if people have questions. Otherwise, I'm going to keep talking about what I want to talk about because guess what? It's my live cast. But thank you guys for being on. Thank you for watching. Please, uh, again, hit the notifications button up in the top right corner to get notified when I go live. If you have questions, feel free to leave comments. Anytime you can tap the like button, that's cool too. Also, please share this. Um, I, it, it goes a long way when you guys share things. Uh, one of the things that Facebook measures as how important content is and how much it's going to be shown to other people is how many likes, comments, and shares it gets. And a share is worth the most weight in terms of this being shown to more people. And I can't help more people. All right. Again, I have, I have a personal goal this year to reach 10,000 entrepreneurs. Will I hit it? I have no idea, but that's my goal. But I can't do that without your guys' help, without you guys right below here clicking the share button for this. Again, I much appreciate it. If you don't feel comfortable sharing it, that's okay. At least comment, give it a like, something of that nature. Again, this all helps boost it out to more people so I can help more people out there. Um, otherwise, that's it, a quick live cast. Thank you guys for being on. I'll see you all on the next one next time. Happy Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, I know I'm going to have a great time this weekend. I have a great time all the time, so I don't know what I'm talking about just this weekend, but I have a great time all the time. Anyways, happy Friday, guys. I look forward to seeing you on another live cast in the future.